All right. So, you sold enough lawnmowers <laughs> to get here. And, and how was that, though, to be the leader early? And then you had to come through the field like you did. It seemed to be a little tough. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, that was, I obviously stepped on it there, getting just too close with the lap cars. But, uh, I mean, that's racing on this track. But, uh, yeah, I mean, to see the fans, like, get engaged with our racing is because it's such a body fan base <laughs> with body race cars that we're kind of a black sheep here. But uh, you know, on the red flag, I could see people getting pumped up because they are talking about me on the PA. And uh, then uh, to come across the finish line, I could see everybody standing up. And, and then when I was on the cool-down lap, just looking at everybody, and I was like, man, they, they finally, like, paid attention and watched us and seen what, what we can do. And that was just as rewarding as winning to know that we actually made race fans, dirt race fans, out of – or midget fans, or open may, wheel fans. Maybe midget fans, but if not, they just they came together and put aside what they think about us and like enjoyed a damn good race. Well, it, it seems like that. Honestly, you know, they, you, 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 we've all seen the meme where the uh, black guy and the white guy is holding their hand, and it's like what the government doesn't want: the black guy and the white guy working together. If you know, I've been on my deal like NASCAR. You know, if they're the government of the racing world. The last thing they want is the open wheel guys and the fendered guys coming together because it seems like there is that wall between the modified late mall crowd and then the sprint car midget crowd that if that bridge was gapped, you're talking about a pretty big damn fan base. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We maybe made a few fans. We maybe switched them over. There's a lot of them coming here. They didn't come here to watch the midgets. They're coming by here shaking my hand, telling me it's the best, one of the best race they've ever seen or they have seen. So, I mean, that's, like I said, just, you know, winning was awesome, but knowing that, uh, you know, just that people were entertained, I mean, and, and I had something to do with it is, is awesome. Now, obviously, the, the Tyler Carpenter deal got the, the news this week. He He's about, you know, five kids and a family and all that, GD and wrecking lap cars and all that. But you are, you, you're a lawnmower salesman, correct? Yeah. I, Not, I mean, uh, you kicked Christopher Bell's ass and they made fun of it. But, but you got to work your ass yeah. to get out here and race where you're racing, you know? So, I mean, you're kind of that working man for this division compared to some of the other guys who are younger or just kind of renting the rides. You're kind of like that working man representation yeah, I mean, of the midgets. I've got four kids myself, uh, or three, one on the way. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's – it's nice to, to represent somebody like that or, or that type of person. I mean, there's there's plenty more than just me. I mean, I'm not the only one. I'm right now I'm the, the one that didn't enjoy it all. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's rewarding because I do all the work on my car. I got guys to help. But I mean, that car was built by me, prepared by me, and, and then you know set up by me. So I had to do, I had to set the damn thing up and drive it. So all of that makes it that much more special. Now, what's special to me? Is maybe, you know, the dome season or indoor season for the late mile fender crowd is gone. But now the fender crowd, if they want somebody to cheer for in the Tulsa shootout or the Chili Bowl, they got their guy now. What are you anticipating for that Chili Bowl? Obviously, you got the Yoda. You needed to get the Yoda to keep up with those guys when they reworked that track and it's 55 laps to keep up with Kyle Larson. You need a damn good car and a damn good motor. motor. You have that now. You've won prelim nights. What else do you do you think that you have what you need now to compete with those guys who have that privileged equipment in a way? I mean, I think a night like tonight, I mean, knowing that we had a really good car and then uh, just some confidence. I mean, because last year, of course, we didn't race this race and going into the Chili Bowl. So now I'm going to be, you know, just a tick fresher and just, you know, obviously confidence in the car, confidence in me driving it and, you know, wrenching on it. So you're kicking Larson's ass, aren't you? I want to. If I, I, I keep telling everybody when I win the Chili Bowl, John Beeson's retired. No, you're not. I, no, I, I no. promise you I will. That's when you get into a truck ride. Hey, maybe if that was the case, but I wouldn't. If, if it wasn't, then I'd be happy as a lark. All right, well, you got a line lined up. I don't want to keep you too right, much longer. I'm but I think you have a fan base now behind you, and Chili Bowl may mean a little bit more this year. And you may be representing more than just some local people in Tulsa, you know. I'll take the fans. You're not pushing them away? I don't know. Have you been using that marker a lot yeah, tonight? a little bit. Hopefully I'll wear it out tonight. And you're going to be using one of those, right? Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. No shot. No, what do you no. feel about Christopher Bell? Uh, Hell of a NASCAR driver. Oh, okay. Larson's my favorite. Larson's your... Is it because he said the N-word? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding.